What makes your day job pleasurable? Uh, the, the smile on the faces of the people, the idea that they feel that they've done something, we've done something as a group, as a team. That makes it very pleasurable. To be able to walk in and, and not have a, a mean look on your face and not get excited. It's only twice in my life that I blew my cool, and that was very stupidity on my part. But let other people work, contribute, and motivate. Your management style. If you're thought about your man, what is your management style? management style. I, I, I think the management style, if you look mm -hmm. at a business and you look at your five children that you raise, the business is not no more than raising five children. Your management style has to be such adapted to each individual. Each individual is different, must be treated different, must be motivated different, and must be rewarded differently. And money is not the complete reward. The idea is to say thank you to someone who you're working with and compliment that particular person or persons when they do things well. So management style is more of a guide to what you want to accomplish. And they do the work. I understand you know the name and perhaps spouse's name of every employee? Well, let's say in the beginning, yes. Right now, I know each person, and I know what their spouses are, but sometimes I have a mental block, and I block out, the name gets blocked out to me, and I have to be careful what I'm doing, what I'm saying in that respect. But I know them as always recognition, yes. And I know what, what bothers them, I know when they're, uh, troubled when they, I can tell from their mode of action if they have a, a problem that I can help and solve and I never get involved in personally trying to figure out what their problems are unless they want to tell me, then I will help. And you will listen? Absolutely. Is there anything about your relationship with uh, your, your employees, your partners if you will, that's sacred that you will not do not go to other than this personal issue? I mean, are they your friends? Are they your children? Are, how do you view them? And they're, they're expensive. The employees are expensive yeah. in the sense of the profit. I mean, it costs a lot of money to have an employee. Yes, but the rewards for that employee are there too, huh? And I, and I look at them as, as part of a family of a group of people who get together and work together as a team, huh? Not specifically to hurt anyone or to badmouth anyone and, and my philosophy is if somebody don't say anything bad about a person and look at them as very openly if you want to criticize a person you do it individually if you want to compliment a person you do it in a group fashion but then if you're complimenting person a in a group of a through the alphabet don't you have to compliment the others not necessarily. What you need to do is, because the other people will recognize what that person has done. And if you recognize what they've done in the group, it will, in my opinion, will help motivate the other people to improve what they're and doing. And so what your profession is really about is people. Yes. Period. Absolutely. I, I believe any profession is about people. And so that we're thinking of, I'll call them interpersonal skills and intrapersonal skills interpersonal skills being knowing yourself. You have to know your limitations and you have to know what you can't do. And it, I think I talked to you once before, you have to hire people who are smarter than you and you have to accept that. And then you have to let that in, innovate in that particular individual because he or she doesn't know something is not wrong. If you don't know, say you don't know. And don't try and push things aside, huh? Be how, very open. How do you hire? Let's assume, hypothetically, I'm applying for a job. Yes. What do you look for? I look for a person who doesn't lose his cool. I look for a person who's logical in what they, what they try to do. And I look for a person who is innovated in what he or she wants to accomplish. Huh? So uh, you don't have to tell that person, hey, close the door, the wind is blowing outside. They will take it upon their own initiative to do it. And one who's not afraid to do something and not afraid to be reprimanded or afraid that I'm going to do something wrong. Make a decision and then follow through on it. So the only failure is the absence of a decision. Very true. That's very good. Never thought about it that way. That's right. That is a big failure, the absence of a decision. Yeah, I think... Uh, 
Errors are typically of omission rather than commission. errors of omission. Yes, you're uh, very you, correct. You, you, and if you rely upon someone else, uh, it's not your decision that you're going to live with that forever, and you're going to blame that person when in fact it shouldn't be. Yours. No, you never blame anybody. <clears throat> don't don't hold grudges or blame every, anybody for whatever it is we do. You look at the person and say, "How can I help you make this happen?" And then work with that person that it does that that person accomplish something that satisfies them. And who? Uh, is or was your mentor? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really have some. My father was a great influence on me. I remember he came to our shop one time and he said, Ed, don't walk through the shop with a cup of coffee in your hand. Walk through the shop like you have a purpose in life. And then if you have a purpose in life, your people will have a purpose in life. Don't wander around. Basically, I don't know if I'm, I don't really have a mentor. I'm thinking about technology and the impact on your area and jobs in general. Okay, my technology is is practical in what I would do, but now I look at the technology of the, I am not a computer literate, unfortunately, and I look at today's market and tell you what we're doing and how much innovation you can do with that magic computer, how you, I was in a meeting today, how all these things can be brought up and put together. I don't have the ability to do that, but our people do. So technology is important to keep up with what transpires and what's happening, and we trained our people to do that. Now, should I do that? Yeah, but do I do it? No. Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that question. Why not? Well, I'm thinking that the advent of technology, the internet, and whatever, that manufacturing jobs may be indeed an endangered species. Well, this is what they say. Manufacturing jobs in the States are endangered species because I can get it built cheaper with less labor overseas. But the innovation factor is here in the States. The efficiency of operation is in our stateside manufacturing. And I think we have to bring a manufacturing back here to the United States. We are more efficient than the countries I travel to, where we have, we have mm. people, three people that are doing a job. I've been in countries where there's seven or eight people doing that particular job. Well, they're not concerned about that because their rate is low so they still come out with the same dollar signs. But eventually, this, these countries, underdeveloped countries, their salaries increase, and we have to be, design ourselves to be more efficient here in the States. What does Ed Tagan want to be remembered for? <laughs> Someone who was ethical, moral, and uh, had the courage of his convictions. End of story. End of story. This has been my privilege to visit with you this afternoon. Well, I thank you very much for the opportunity to come here.